uh, in, the in the recent past, we have been going through the spiritual disciplines. And in this month, there have been more emphasis on thanksgiving. And I think if you have been keen, you can even tell from the, so the music that you are singing, you can tell. If you are able to decipher, if you just allow your spirit to just be in the present. You are present, yes. But just allow your, present, your spirit to be present. You get the meaning. You get the difference. It is one thing to be present in the service. And it is the other thing to be present, present. I love what Pastor Alice usually tells us. That please be present, present. Be present here physically and be present here with every being within you. And today we are going to learn the benefit of thanksgiving. Benefit of thanks, thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is a core part of our spiritual life and can greatly deepen our connection to God, reflecting on his grace and power in our lives. And there is no way. Thanksgiving being one of the dis spiritual disciplines that we ought to. I remember, I, th I think it was David who said that even Christ himself gave thanks. When he was given uh, two fish and five bread, five loaves of bread, he gave thanks. You know, I'm just imagining. You know, Christ had the power to just say, where the fish I have, I'm telling you, multiply. He had the power. He is God. He could have been in his human form here on earth, but he still was God. And he had the power to say, uh, where the fish nimewambia, in fact, ama muende, walk to the ocean or to the sea. I am telling you to go right now to the sea and get your brothers. <laughs> See, he was able to do that. He was able to do that. But he knew the importance of being, having gratitude. Just the saying thank you. Just saying thank you. And I know sometimes you may look into your life and you can't see anything to thank God for. Everything is going south. Allah. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Sometimes you just look at things and you are seeing everything is going south. In, the, in your human nature, you can't be able to pinpoint one, two, three things. Even the smallest. Just, you know, our mind has power. To the extent, it is able to just curb you from other things and put you in this specific situation for you not to see anything good in your life. Maybe you have been... I, I remember there was this... Um, Siku brag, but high school nili soma miaka tatu, but siku taka. <laughs> Not that I wanted, I wanted to be in school, <laughs> but I didn't. And for a whole good year, I was at home. And in fact, at some point, I knew, uh, masomo yangu ya high school, imeishia hapa from one first term. Because things were really, really, really tough. Unaangalia hivi unaona ile unawaambia mzazi wako nataka school fees na kuambia kuna shida ya macho wakiangalia kwa kibeti yaoni kitu Let us be real so we can be real ye ile tu atawe mwenyewe you can check the situation at hand and see By then I would complain to God and tell God ai Mungu wewe Yaani Mungu na venye nimeogoka huku nje kwa streets Mungu na venye nimefanya follow ups I used to uh, go to a church in NGM, National Gospel Ministries in Dandora. That is where my mom is still is even right now. And I used to complain. I would wake up in the morning, uh, do house chores, nitoke, I carry my sister Juma, Mamenda Kibarua, I go to church. Na kazi yangu tuko ni kushinda ni kililia mungu ni kumuambia umeniacha, umenisahao, alafu afternoon, tunapatana na wengine wenye wamefukusu wakama mimi, tunenda follow up. Kwa wengine wamefukusu wakama sisi. <laughs> Now, looking back, 
I see what God was doing. Because it is during that time that even I, and I, I grew spiritually. Do I, I, re I reached a point and I stopped complaining. I told God, Sawa, kama hapa ndiyo masome yangu imefika, ata, mimi ni wakwanza kweli? Will I be the first one? Kufika form one first term? No, I will not. So I decided, you know what, God? Uh, it is fine. So what I will do, I would wake up, just go to church. And looking back right now, I see what God was doing. The situation would... Haikuwa mzuri. The situation would have, it was looking not so nice. Imagine, nani mtu, I love books, I love kusoma, ni napenda masomo, napenda shule. Okay, mimi si wa uko one one. Sawa, wa uko one one. But then mimi si wa uko nyuma nyuma. Sawa, sawa, niko karibu na one one. <laughs> but nice was if you, but I loved school. Since I was a small, I love, even right now, I love school. And I see what God was doing, because it is during then, we used to go for evangelism. Nachege, don't, please, don't use this against me after this. I used to go for evangelism and just follow up and go visit people who have not been in church for a while, young people like us. And I loved those moments. And I loved when, when now my mom was like, now we can go back to school. Akaniuliza, would you mind going to, going back to form one? Kamambia, ay, mami, hapo ni kona shidea macho. Sioni ni kirudi form one, nipeleke tu form two. And I went to form two, second term. Form two, second term. And let me tell you, I had the easiest time. Easiest time in this form. My mom only, I think, paid, alinibaya uniform peke yake, everything else. God made a way and provided. Even when I went to college, God provided. So sometimes you may look, you even right now, maybe you are asking yourself, as we sing all this music and you are saying that Bwana unastahili utukufu, sifa na utukufu, you can't see the possibility. Or you're just singing it for the formality. You see, you're just singing for the formality because, well, we are singing. But your spirit, your soul is not in that. It is not able to decipher what exactly are you saying. I would like us to just look at one of the person who understood. Who just understood. Before we look into one character in the Bible and then we'll go to the benefits of gratitude. I hope time will allow us. In the book of Psalms 103. It's from, what, from verse 1 to verse 12, but we'll only go to around verse 4, verse 5. Let us read together. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all that we see. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, that youth is renewed like the ego. Tuneza fikisha hapo. I want to give you a few reasons. You may not see reasons to thank God, but I just want to give you a few reasons that you will find yourself thanking God even in the deep of deeps. But nice was if there is any English like that one. This psalm, we know that the book of Psalm has been written by different authors, right? And the one with the different commentators I've ever read, around seven are the ones who are known. Some of the Psalms, it is said that it is not known who, who wrote them. But this particular Psalm, it was written by David because it is simply uh, titled a Psalm of David, a Psalm of David. And there are, a bit, there are some debate with different theologians concerning this particular psalm. And they are saying, uh, asking, was this psalm, because the book of Psalms was, was written in, in between the six, 1300 C and 550, 586 BC. 
sawa. During that time, David reign was around 1000 C to around 500 BC. Sawa, sawa, around there. And they are asking, was this a specific psalm written in the younger years of David or the older years of David? Because we understand, unakumbuka the younger years of David. So unakumbuka zile vitu kwa liku nazo. Si unakumbuka hizo story. Eh? Alivani. Unapata like, he started very nicely in the, in the wilderness looking after his dad's goat and sheep. Now in that, in when he's there, he's a, he's a good shepherd because he's killing bears and lions and he's also practicing. Gita uko tu kwa wilderness. Banais wasifiwe. Okay, Bible just say man a practice. I'm just assuming because when Saul was possessed, they looked for a man and they said, David, kuna kakijana anapiganga. Banais wasifiwe. So I want to assume when he's not dealing with the bears and the lions. He was busy doing what? He was busy practicing his guitar, harp. Harp ni guitar, yaktambo, whatever that is. Whatever that is, Indio. So, and because we understand also when he was young, after Amekuja into leadership, Badala endewo, Amebaki nyumbani. Sawa, nakasema a room room. Kurom ni mzuri as a king, especially. Sindio, si lazima uamuke. I loved when uh, ningenda where our, our home is. Our home home where usha go. Usha go yandani. Si kwenye unajua. Usha go ingine. We have another one. <laughs> where we have to kona land na kuna kume plantiwa and our house. I loved what my dad would do. Every day in the morning, he would wake up. Before Ata Aoke Uso Afanya anything, he would go to the shamba and he would walk along the whole shamba when I was young, along, everywhere, everywhere, and then I would hear him saying, na, na, Pale uliko mesema panapandwa, pale u, like that is what he would do. Now, for a king, you, David just going through the palace and seeing how things are running. See, he was doing the right thing, but at the wrong time. And then he's doing, he, he, his eyes sees, Haina Pazia. And then we know what he did. And then to cover that, he did something else. And then thinking that he will be able to cover himself, he did now the extreme. Praise God. So one of the theologians called Charles Spurgeon says that we should attribute it to his later years when he had higher sense of the preciousness of pardon. Praise God. Because of a keener sense of sin that in his younger days, than in his younger days. His clear sense of the frailty of life indicates his weaker years as we also does in very fullness of the praiseful gratitude. That he says that we, go, we, should, uh, we should attribute this specific psalm to the years, to the later years of David when he has understood. Imagine at the end of it all, that still God says, David is a man after my own heart. Though that was specific, that said before, before he became a king. But even when we are seeing, God is still with him, even up to the end, despite everything else he has, he has done. So, this, uh, this theologian, Anasema, that we should attribute it to his older days, because when how he's pouring out himself, how he's pouring out himself is inaonyeshana. It's like alikuwa ukumuisho amesha zeka ameona yote amefanya yote na amejua uzuri wa mungu. Bana iswa sifiwe. He says in the book of Psalms, so sa Psalm to me Psalm 103 verse two that bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. In the bless the Lord. Not that David had have any capacity to bless God, remember. It is just because God is the only one who can bless us. It, me, it meant in the sense that it blesses and honors God when his creatures praise him and thank him appropriately. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. David is calling 
not only his soul, but everything within him. He looked at his soul and understood that it was not praising God. Yes, he's praising God, but he's not praising God. He's not praising God enough. He called upon his soul to do more. He understood, that, he understood that gratitude had to emanate from the deep inside of him. It is very easy to just say, Lord, I thank, I thank you. Lord, I am grateful. But it is only from the surface of the mouth. It can just be coming from the surface of the mouth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. What a rebuke to much of what passes for praises in our assemblies. How many times we come here and we say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. But in the innate of our hearts, we really do not mean it. That the only, the one value of these opening words of David is that they show us that worship is not involuntary or automatic. It calls for the coordination of all our powers. Everything, every being within you. We should enter it with all the powers and our, pers our personality arrested, arranged, and dedicated. I'll repeat that. That it calls for the coordination of all our powers. We should enter it with all our personalities arrested, arranged, and dedicated. Even with technology, you get to know a lot of things. Tunambonga kuna wenye wakona two personalities, three personalities, four personalities. Especially that is, has been uh, going viral for some time. That me, I have personality, depending with who I am meeting. So we are talking about all those personalities. That nikiwa hapa, those personalities, all of them, are rested, arranged and dedicated. Then we may render our service of praise that is worthy and acceptable. One of the benefits that David mentions in this, in, this, um, in this verse, that he says in verse 2, that bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Praise God. It's easier to forget all the benefits, especially when things are not going the way we think. Our mind has the power to just cap us to the current situation, closing up the great benefits that God has bestowed upon us. In the next verse, Verse now, verse 3, David lists some of the benefits. And it, verse 3 says that who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases. When the magnitude of our sin and the righteousness of God are understood, this forgiveness is a staggering reason for praising and honoring God. That if you understand the magnitude of our sin, and the magnitude of the righteousness of God that he has, he gives you once you received him, you received him as the Lord and Savior. Then that is enough reason for you to just praise God. You may not know where your rent is coming from, but thank God you are born again. You may not know you want to go back to school, auna school fees, but at least you are born again. You may, not, you may want to live in a certain way, but at least you have food. And you are born again. At once you understand that he also heals our diseases, both physical and spiritually, and our soul. He heals every kind of disease, mental illness. Let no one tell you that he's not able it is easier right now. Everybody is, uh, is just framing and titling diseases and owning them up. But I know that our God is able to heal all of them. He's able to heal. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. But your faith really matters. He says in verse 4 that who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Imagine who redeems, and he purchased us back, us who are lost to death. 
We were preserved from destruction. God's greatness extends beyond sparing us from sin, disease, and trouble. Through God's blessing, we are crowned with his great love and mercy. Verse 5 says that who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God wants to bring the true satisfaction to our lives through good things. This satisfaction becomes a source of strength and energy to us. Nothing in this world that will give you satisfaction in life apart from God. The true kind of satisfaction is found in Christ alone. All other things can only give you temporal satisfaction. No wonder people are falling into many addictions, trying to fill the vacuum. Remember, I think I've said this severally, that in every human being, there is a God-shaped vacuum. And our God is so merciful. He's so good. Yani, you know, you know it, God created you, but he still gives you the will, the free will to choose him. He still gives you the free will to choose him. But the good thing is, even if you don't choose him, nothing else will satisfy you. You just have to come to him. Because he is, our serial number reads, created by God. So, for this masterpiece, this masterpiece, tell your, tell your neighbor, this masterpiece, the best you could do is take it to the owner to fill it up. Remember, he has promised satisfaction. Praise God. As you, as you continue reading that, uh, the book of Psalm 103, you will see so many other benefits that God has for us. Uh, that David lists, which you are given free of charge. You didn't ask for it. Even for you who are not born again, you may not really understand. Ebu try Jesus, and you will experience these benefits that just come naturally. Once you say, Lord, I receive you. They are dinakuwa packaged vizuri na zinaandikwa. It is for you, free of charge. Free of charge. Mwana iswa sifiwe. One benefit of gratitude. Time is really flying, guys. Gratitude glorifies God. This alone would be reason to give God thanks. Our gratitude glorifies God as you exalt not the gifts, but the giver. Gratitude helps us realize all we have comes not because of us, but from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 says, And as God's grace reaches more and more, more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. Gratitude number two, I'm trying to rush. Gratitude helps us see God. Gratitude opens our spiritual eyes. There's a beautiful cycle in giving God thanks. The more we thank him, the more we see, we see him working in us and around us. Gratitude helps us sense God's presence, his personal care, and his perfect timing. It is most of the time, I don't know if you've ever found yourself in a place where you are in the, in the presence of God and you're just telling God thanks, and then he starts revealing things in the past that he has done for you. You are just thanking him. Ulianza too very softly. And then at some point you find, una deep too. <laughs> Stephen and Anaisa relate. And he's, he's even responding with a laugh. That's a, that's a nice one. Like, you start, umianza too very softly. Oh Lord, I thank you. But as you go deeper and deeper, and the Holy Spirit is just revealing you and reminding you, remember he did this, remember he does that. In that thing, that now you are able, by the way, God has been there. Wow, 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 wow. Praise God. God has been there. Now, what will you do? You will do God will do it. Ah, guys, come on. Ah, come on, guys. <laughs> Praise God. In the book of James 1, 16, 17, it says, Do not be deceived, my, br my beloved brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from is from 
coming down from the father of the wonderful wonderful gratitude number three is the gratitude puts us squarely in god's will we often make god's will out to be some big mystical plan when sometimes it's simply obedience and part of his will is for us to be thankful not just on the sunny days but on the hard days also First Thessalonians 5.18 says that give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Praise God. That Thessalonians 1, First Thessalonians 5.18 says give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Gratitude number four is gratitude brings wholeness. I'm reminded of the story of the 10 lepers in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 17 to 19, where they came and uh, Christ told them that they should go and show themselves to the, to the priests. And verse 17, it says, let us read together. And Jesus answering said, where were the 10 cleansed? To some, what are you afraid of? When you pass the pool and you're afraid of anger, some are with. To some, I'm not sure if you're afraid of anger. Some are with. Roya Kanisa, wonderful. <laughs> so, what are to some men? Roya Kanisa, eh? Uh -huh. And Jesus answering said, "Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger." And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee. Thy faith hath made you. What? Whole. Imagine, they were ten. Even the nine, they were healed. But it is only one who was healed and made whole. That is what gratitude does to us. That not only are you healed? But to become whole. Praise God. Do you want to be whole? Muliza, do you want to be whole? Then, uh, gratitude number five is gratitude depends your faith. Keeping a record of God's past faithfulness is a faith booster when we face new difficulties. One of the this spiritual disciplines that we have been able to learn in the recent past is, is journaling. Sendo? Journaling. And the Bible itself is a journal. See, tunapewa story ya Israelite. Venye walitoka, venye Moses alipatikana, alipat, ali was called, and when he went, and what they did, you understand? Looking that, now we have the Bible, and even you, having just somewhere to be noting what God has done. So somewhere you can go back in the dark days. No, no, days, you can't be able to see anything apart from the problem you are facing. Somewhere you can be able to do. That will be able to depend your faith. The book of Psalms 136, 1, it says that give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love and yours forever. forever. Gratitude leads to joy and contentment. You are content. That one. Yes, that one, guys. <laughs> it says that gratitude makes what we have enough. Vanessa was if we aren't grateful for what God has given us, getting more won't satisfy us either. Being thankful is the key to contentment. First Timothy 6, 6 to 8, it says, But godliness with Tusome Eheh Eheh Twendele verse 7 Uh -huh. Wonderful. But nice was a favorite. 
the overflow of gratitude now when you are contented when you are, you you are you you are okay with what you have then the joy emanates from you because the overflow of gratitude is joy realizing god's abundant goodness even in the heart is a getaway for joy Psalms 126 verse 1 to 3 says when the lord restored the fortunes of zion we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. That psalm shows that even the Hebrews, uh, shows this so clearly as the Hebrew exiles sang their thanks to God for bringing them back to Israel. We can see that they are singing the songs of joy. And of course, if you're contented and you have the joy of the Lord, peace is very eminent. So the, the last one is gratitude brings, brings peace because of time. That after knowing that it's Christ who gives and you're contented with that, then peace like a river will flow from within. Count your blessings, not your sheep. We are told to get rid of worry, uh, keep, not to get rid of worry, keeping us up at night. Gratitude helps us see the God's hand in all of our circumstances. Gratitude, I wanted to finish here, but let me just say it, Kidogo too. Gratitude defies Satan's lie. Satan is so willy. He, he, he whispers that God isn't good, that he's withholding good from us. But his kings are, are as old as in the Garden of Eden. When he's just discussing with Eve and he's telling, did God say, don't you see God is, uh, uh, God anafanya, anataka usiku, usi, usi nini? Usikuwe kama ye, yes, indio? And in the true sense, we were created in the image of God. That, mean, that means we are already like God. So gratitude will help you to be able to decipher the lies of the, of the evil one. In the Garden of Eden, it was perfect. That produced abundant with, without work or weeding. <laughs> Where every single plant, any, a whole garden has been given. Like in Eve was convinced because of one, but because God does not want uh, Eve to be like... God and Eve was already created in the image of God. In conclusion, thanksgiving or gratitude is a powerful way to glorify God, see his presence more clearly, and align with his will. As David encourages, we can cultivate deep and genuine gratitude by remembering God's benefit and thanking him wholeheartedly. This not only glorifies God, but also enriches our lives with peace, with faith, peace, joy, and contentment. Let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name this morning. We worship you for your word, my God. Thank you for those for what you did for us, dear Father. That Jehovah God, you chose us before we chose you, that you knew us before we knew you, my God. We thank you for those wonderful benefits that you have given unto us. We pray the Holy Spirit will, will remind us every day of our lives that we will be reminded of the benefits, oh God, that comes with you. We lift up your name, Jehovah God, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray.